By 1993, Mortal Kombat is a nationwide phenomenon. In just three weeks, the home versions of Mortal Kombat sell three million copies, making it the best-selling game of its time. But the very thing that makes the game unique also gets it in trouble. The fact that there was blood in the game was sort of this big controversy. And I remember when Mortal Kombat first came to the home console systems, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, and Nintendo wouldn't even let them have blood in the original Mortal Kombat game. We were told by a claim that, you know, Nintendo was not going to allow it. You know, it's their system. They had an image that they were really upholding, and they did not want a game that had blood in it, let alone fatalities. The claim said, oh, let's make the blood gray and it'll be sweat. But fans aren't happy with the decision, and Nintendo pays a high price for it. I've actually heard some people say that that was one of the things that helped Sega overtake Nintendo in that whole console wars because the Genesis version was outselling it like three to one. The Super Nintendo version actually looked better, the Genesis version was more realistic and actually played better too. But the controversy doesn't end there. Mortal Kombat becomes just one of many violent games that are targeted by concerned parents and politicians. There was concern about these games and members of Congress talking about uh, video games being the sort of uh, decline and fall of Western civilization and destroying our youth and uh, leading them down the path of uh, no good. I hope you walk away with one thought today, that if you don't do something about it, we will. And the industry felt that uh, we needed to respond in some way, in a proactive way. They wanted to get some sort of a rating system, and there should have been a rating system in place. I think the rating system is necessary. It's just like an R-rated movie. But that was like kind of the cause of that whole thing, was the fact that it didn't have a rating system in place. The controversy over violent games such as Mortal Kombat play a big part in the formation of the IDSA. The IDSA formed back in late 93, early 1994, and we felt that it was much more productive for the industry to self-regulate. I think the controversy actually, you know, it didn't hurt the sales by any means. I think it actually you know, brought more attention to it. The Mortal Kombat Dynasty continues with the release of Mortal Kombat 2 in April 1993. Mortal Kombat 2 totally improved over the original title. Technology improved. We got to make the characters look a lot more realistic than the first game. The storyline actually got to be more involved. Our world was created during MK2. More popular characters were introduced in MK2. Jax was introduced. More fatalities were introduced. It just looked bigger, more colorful than the original. Fans just, till this day, MK2 is still number one in a lot of players' eyes. And when MK2 heads to the home market, Nintendo keeps the blood in the game. The Mortal Kombat craze peaks in 1995 with the release of Mortal Kombat the Animated Series and the first Mortal Kombat movie. I clearly remember seeing on CNN, they said, you know, Mortal Kombat, $23 million, the second biggest August opening ever, and going, oh my god, this is insane. That same year, Midway releases Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 3 probably had had the toughest time of all the Mortal Kombat's because it followed two climbing games in terms of features. We really wanted to add something to speed up the, the, the fighting, so we added the run button. And the run button let you kind of dash in there and get a bunch of hits in there. And we had changed a lot of the dynamics of the, of the play mechanic. When MK3 heads to home consoles, Sony gets exclusive rights to the game for the PlayStation. Some fans aren't happy with the sequel's new features. One of the things that disappointed people at Mortal Kombat 3 was that they had a, they introduced a new combo system. The problem was the combo system was really, really complicated to learn. One of the great things about the original two Mortal Kombat's was that it was a deep game, but it was pretty fun to play, just, you know, without having to remember all these combos. Mortal Kombat 3 was a bit of a letdown. In 1996, Midway releases an updated version of Mortal Kombat 3 called Ultimate Mortal Kombat. Midway plans to take the franchise in a new direction with Mortal Kombat 4. But will it be too much of a departure from what made the series a success? In 1997, a second Mortal Kombat movie hits the big screen. It makes $17 million in its first week, but doesn't match the success of the first film. 
By now, 3D fighters such as Tekken 2 are edging out 2D fighters. So Midway decides to take its franchise in a new direction with the release of Mortal Kombat 4. Mortal Kombat 4 was the first one that was a departure from the, the digitized graphics. It was like, you know, 3D models. It was a, a 3D presentation, but 2D mechanics. And I don't think that those two mixed as well together with that game. More than 2 million copies of Mortal Kombat 4 are sold, but the game receives mixed reviews, and fans of the series are beginning to lose interest. Mortal Kombat 4, you know, showed some growing pains, I think, as they tried to learn about, you know, how to do this game in 3D and how to make it fun. And, you know, for the, the hardcore Mortal Kombat fans, I think they were nostalgic for the way Mortal Kombat 2 was, and they didn't necessarily want it to go to 3D. But rather than returning Mortal Kombat back to its roots, Midway continues to expand the series. Mortal Kombat mythologies and special forces were side projects of John Tobias. John wanted to work on an adventure game and he kind of led that whole project. Those games were not the head-to-head -head fighting games. John was a storyteller, and he wanted to explore the whole realm of Mortal Kombat more. <laughs> Midway releases Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero in 1997. The game receives a lukewarm response. How unfortunate you are responsible for this sorcerer! with Special Forces. You know, we wanted to uh, introduce more of an adventure type game. It's panned by critics as one of the worst games in the franchise. Two years later, John Tobias decides to leave Midway and start his own company, Studio Gigante. I was looking for an opportunity to kind of branch off and, and sort of retain a bit of ownership in the things that I create. And I, as an employee of a larger company, you can't really do that. And so I enjoyed my time at Midway. I, th I thought that it was a fantastic place to work, and we did great things there. But uh, for me and my career, um, it was time to move on. By 2001, the Mortal Kombat series is in a rut. Midway decides to abandon the arcade business and focus on the console market. Ed Boon and his team regroup for Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. What was different between MK Deadly Alliance and MK4 was that we just learned a lot more. We learned a lot about gameplay. We learned about how to be more proficient in 3D. Got more proficient with motion capture. We all really wanted to do a good job and try to revitalize it. Deadly Alliance comes out exclusively for home consoles in 2002, and for many fans, it revitalizes the series. Mortal Kombat, of course, made a surprising comeback. I don't think anybody quite expected Deadly Alliance to be as big a hit as it was. It was a multi-platinum uh, seller. And in October 2004, Midway releases Mortal Kombat Deception. It's a 3D game, but it still has that classic Mortal Kombat kind of feel to it. I think people are going to look at this thing and go, wow. Mortal Kombat's more than just a fighting game. We've really enhanced the fighting engine with our backgrounds, giving them as much of an influence on the outcome of the fight as possible. This is the dark prison background. We're now looking at the death trap. You're not going to survive that. You can actually knock somebody back into this background here. You see him knocked down to the bottom. There's a weapon that you can grab, so it's a lot more of a, an immersive experience. It has the fighting game, it has a puzzle game, it has a uh, board game, and then we have like a single player conquest adventure mode. So all of these kind of mixed together, put it online. We're really excited about just how much stuff is crammed into this game. After Deception, there will definitely be another Mortal Kombat. We'll push as far as we can go. No matter what the future brings to the Mortal Kombat series, there is no denying its effect on the world of gaming. It is fun to see Mortal Kombat still sort of there as one of the top products. It's the third or fourth biggest franchise in the world. I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar with all the movies and the TV shows. To Ed's credit, you know, he's still there. He's still very faithful to the franchise that he built. Mortal Kombat has always tried to be just the most outrageous, fun experience for the player. That's why the fans keep coming in droves to play his games. Outstanding.